Hello everybody, I'm Nick. In the previous video, I showed you how you can use the .NET Run app.cs or any file on the .NET Run command that is coming in .NET 10 and is now in preview in preview 4 of .NET 10. Now in this video, I want to take all the feedback I got on that video and Microsoft got on their own video and I want to address it as well as show you some more things I didn't show as well as Microsoft didn't show and also talk about the reasoning why this is becoming a feature now, what Microsoft is trying to achieve really and some upcoming things that you probably haven't seen yet, but I'm sure you want to use. So let me show you what I have here. If you want to just get a reminder, all we can do now in, in C Sharp is we can have an empty app.cs file as long as we have the uh, .NET extension, the C Sharp extension in preview. We can go here and of course we have .NET 10 installed as well. We can go here to the terminal and say .NET run app.cs and this will do all the building behind the scenes and you're able to run this file as a script. Yes, there was something called .NET script that was able to run app.csx, CS executable files. Well, I don't even think that's a built-in thing. Uh, well, now you don't have to do that. You can use the built-in functionality like we've been doing for years. One of the things I didn't mention, I want to make it very clear, is that all of this works on Linux. If I go over here, I am on WSL uh, and if I do .NET run, and point to the app.cs. This will take longer for some reason on Linux is slower, but it will work. It will work in the exact same way as it does on Windows and as it does on Mac. The other thing I want to show is you can actually have shebang syntax to turn the app file itself to an executable. So once you do that and then you go and add a shmod over here, you can go and say make the app.cs an executable. And then if you just say app.cs, that will work in itself, it's an executable now, and you can just run it anywhere. It does take some time, however, but yeah, it does work the same way that a Node app would work, or like a JavaScript file, a Python. That's what they're trying to imitate. And, and I say all that, by the way, because Microsoft has two motivations here. First, get new developers in, make it easier for them to enter. And the second thing is replace partial scripting with C Sharp scripting. Uh, they have both announced these two things publicly in one of the documentation pages. So we know for a fact that's what they want to do. Now, a few things that weren't mentioned, if I go back here, um, was and I do want to mention that this does not do anything on Windows. So if you just have it and you run it on Windows, it doesn't affect Windows. It's just being ignored. Now, two commands that were not announced, but they do exist, is you can have .NET restore, and this will restore any NuGet packages that this file is referring to. So it doesn't print anything, but you can do it. But if I actually go over here and I add some diagnostic level logging on restore, you will see what's going on here. All the calls behind the scenes with all the implicit files, because yeah, an app.cs project doesn't really exist. As you can see, it points to a file that doesn't exist. It is implicit and it will still exist behind the scenes, but you never see it. It's not a hidden file, it's just implicit. And here you can see all the details about the restore. So the restore thing is working, and the other thing that is working is you can have a .NET build command pointing to that app.cs. So as you can see over here, this will also do the entire build chain. It's a command that exists, they didn't show it, but you can do it. Things you cannot do as of today is you cannot refer to another file. So if you have this example, file over here, the example class, and you go and say, oh, I want to use example.name and print it. Well, this won't actually work. If I go back to run it, it will say, hey, this is not valid. I think eventually we will have it because there are talks about a potential uh, import thing where you can say example.cs. So you'll be able to point to a location and once you import, then you will be able to, to add it. However, this hasn't been implemented yet. It's still in talks. Uh, but if you go to the source code of the CLI, you will see the, the three or four things that are implemented, which is shebang. And then you have, as you might have seen in my other video, the SDK. So you can specify the SDK. You can say it's the normal SDK or the web SDK. Um, and by doing a .NET run, this will implicitly uh, add a lot of files that are related to the web. It will also add this SDK to the CS proj implicitly and also explicitly when you grow the project into a full project, as well as a few other things. You can actually have properties. Microsoft did not show that, but you can say property here and then you can specify a property on the CS proj. So for example, if you want to use the preview lang version, you can say lang version and then the value and this will work. This, if it was turned into a CS proj, it would add this into the top level property groups. Now, of course, this does not exist. I'm going to go back to uh, hello world, uh, but this will work if I just say run, as you can see, hello world. And another thing I can do, mention that in the video, is packages. Now, 
one thing I didn't mention is that if you go to, let's say, Humanizer, and you just leave this like this and you run it, you don't specify any version, it will work, but it will default to the very first version of Humanizer. It's pretty classic package management on the CLI. It's because they don't want you to always default to the latest version and then accidentally from your file pull a version that is a greater version than what you have and then that causes all sorts of issues. So you can say Humanizer is the name and then add version. You can say 2.14.1, which is the latest currently. So if I do that, as you're going to see, this will work and no warnings of, hey, this package is not consistent because the first version was actually 0.1.0. Uh, you can also say, I don't care about the patch version. So I can say, well, any version here will work. Then you can say, oh, I don't care about the minor version as well. Or you can just delete it and have it like this. Here you go. And so on. All of that will work. And behind the scenes, this is using NuGet. Now, my video on this got quite a few comments and I want to address some of the most popular ones, some of the concerns you might have and why Microsoft is doing it. So running C Sharp as a script file is very useful for testing and automation commands, extremely versatile programming language. That's true. It was something we were missing, or at least we did not natively have without installing something else. And now we're just happy to have it. Now, one small step for Microsoft, but a giant leap for those who want to ditch Python. I feel that, but I don't think necessarily that's how you will get someone to switch. At, at least knowing that something you have here exists here is nice to get someone to switch. But I think that's more for new developers. If we can make the demo the simplest it can be, well, things are very nice. Now, finally, top level statements make sense for pretty much everyone, as well as Minimal APIs make more sense about everyone. It's just a very Node-esque, if you may. Said that nobody remembered .NET script. Yeah, but .NET script was a different thing. It was a different file. It had its own rules. Now, this is more of a built-in thing that is more standardized. So, of course, nobody remembers .NET script. It wasn't popular for a reason. I think this will very much is. Another one is this is huge for automation. Massive, massive true as well there. I think we're going to see this in a lot of pipelines. And we had attempts to use things like Nuke in the past, and it's pretty popular for a reason, like it makes sense. And I think with this sort of a .NET run native execution, you're gonna see way, way more things, maybe even provisioning or infrastructure. Like, trust me, when this is out, you're gonna see many, many big things built around it. I think in general, sentiment is pretty, pretty positive. So there are some negative things saying, why are we working on this? Why are we, are we doing this? I've addressed this in the other video. We're doing this because we kind of have to. We have to be more accessible as a language. If we're not ap approachable, then we're not going to be adopted. And if we're not adopted, we're just going to die. So what do I want? Well, I want a way to be able to specify a directory. So I want a way to go here and be like, just import. And I can either import a file or I can import, I don't know everything in this directory or, or some way to basically import files or at least implicitly import what I have on this top level. Because currently, there's no way for me to go and say example dot. And I've tried this in many, many ways. In fact, I checked the source code itself. That functionality just does not exist. This, this import, this loading doesn't exist. So I hope we get it. The other thing I'd really, really want, and I don't know how feasible it is, but it would be so cool, would be if we can have a .NET compile the app.cs to an app.exe or DLL. So with the appropriate thing we have, if I was able to say .NET compile this thing, just make me an executable and then allow me to configure if you want it to be an AOT one or a, I don't know, .NET dependent one. But it would be really, really nice if I can take a small application like this and just build it. And now the last thing that I don't really want, but I have seen talks about people implementing it in the Microsoft team, is be able to do a .NET run and you'll be able to say CS code and then have like a snippet. So say console.write line and then name or do something like this. There are discussions around this. Maybe we'll get it. Maybe we're not. I don't know. We already have REPL for C Sharp, which you can just run C Sharp in the command line. So maybe having it built in makes sense. I don't know. Is the hype real? I think it is. This can really take what we do currently in C Sharp a step further. So I'm glad they're writing it. And again, as a follow up to this, I really want to know from you. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what do you think about this? And do you think this does have a place and what do you want to see added to it? So Microsoft can consider adding it in the future. Well, that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep coding.